Hey everyone, welcome back for another Unraid video. Today we're going to take a look at the basics of generating an SSH key pair and setting up passwordless login for remote servers. There are any number of reasons why you might want to do this, the least of which is no longer having to type a password in every time you want to SSH into a server. This would also be very handy, for example, in a backup script to or from a remote server that would have otherwise required a manual password input. A few things to note. We're going to be keeping it simple today with step-by-step -step instructions, and these instructions assume that you don't currently have any SSH keys, that you're operating from Unraid, and that the remote server is also running Linux. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around and let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up a terminal window. And once we get that done, we'll need to know the IP address of the remote server that we're going to be logged into. It's also worth pointing out that the remote server network needs to have port 22 open for this to function. Or you can also use a server on your local network and then you just enter that IP address. So I'm actually going to be logging into a remote Unraid server, so I'm going to type ssh root at and then the IP address here you can type yes and then the password now on unraid we already have an ssh folder in our root directory and I'm logging into an unraid server and there's a good chance Pretty much any Linux machine that you're going to be logging into is going to have this too, but you can confirm that by typing the following. The make directory command, and then root folder sign slash dot ssh. And as you can see, it shows that my file already exists, but if yours does not, then it will create that here. Then we want to set the right permissions for the directory by typing jmod 700 tilde slash dot ssh. This protects the folder against any access from other users while still allowing the issuing user full access. So you want to make sure whatever user you're logged in as, and as you can see here I'm logged in as root, if there are any other users that try to use the ssh folder, they're going to be restricted. Now we're all set to log out, so we can do that by simply typing log out. Let's go ahead and clear our screen. Now I'm back on the local Unraid system and we're going to generate a new pair of SSH keys, a public and a private version, like so. SSH hyphen keygen and then we're going to do hyphen B space 4096. The B flag instructs the SSH keygen utility to increase the number of bits used for additional security. Now by pressing enter here, this is going to overwrite any existing keys. I just want to say this one more time. This video assumes that you don't have any existing keys in place. So if you're not sure and you don't recall making any SSH keys, then you probably don't. But if you know specifically that you've done this before, this is going to overwrite them. If that's the case, you'll then need to push the new public key to those servers that you've previously set up. Now this is just for additional security on the passphrase here. For now, on this, I'm just going to leave it blank. Now let's navigate to our SSH folder and confirm that our new keys are actually in place. We can do that by typing cd tilde slash dot ssh then ls and you can see right here the id rsa and id rsa.pub files are what are the actual ssh keys and that's what we're going to be using any machine that hosts your public key will allow you remote ssh access with your private key think of the private key as a regular door key and the public key as a deadbolt any door or server that you install your deadbolt on will be opened by your personal private key. 
Now it's time to install our deadbolt on the door by pushing our public key to the server using the SSH copy ID utility. So for that we can type SSH hyphen copy hyphen ID and then we need to enter our username that we logged in with just a few minutes ago. For me it was root at and then the IP address. This will then copy your public key to the authorized keys file on the remote server and you'll be prompted with a password here for the root user and you'll want to enter that. Now you can see number of keys added one and I should be able to log into this machine without having to enter my password. Let's try logging in to confirm. Voila, no password needed, and you can see now that I'm logged in on the remote tower. This functionality can be used for all sorts of things like GitHub, seed boxes, or whatever else you may need. As a matter of fact, my next video will be about exactly that, mounting a seed box to our local file system with the SSHFS tool. And you'll need to have followed these steps first to make that happen. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day.